Welcome in to the PHNX Suns podcast you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's number one sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. I'm Lindsay Smith, and I'm here with Espo today. Gerald is on vacation, and Saul is still working tirelessly to get our new studio up and running. Espo, how you doing? Yeah, I think Saul is lost uh, somewhere in the aisles of Best Buy right now, trying to find cords and adapters that uh, will get things. But I set up a shelf lamp nice. thing behind me, Look so it's not go. a complete, complete sterile white background. So, um, yeah, well, I'm proud of you, Espo. I mean, I know I gave Saul some props, but I'll give you some props because you too are at the new studio getting things all figured out for us. So thank you as well. You're welcome. We're sharing one Wi-Fi hotspot, and I was late getting here because Jacob was using it to do the D-back show. He had to pinch hit. So uh, it's it's been an experience, but we'll keep plugging along. And uh, excited to be here. Uh, you know, not a not a bad weekend, yeah. but uh, did have to drop three hundred and fifty bucks on two new tires. So Ooh, shout out yikes. whoever left the nail on the street that uh, did my tire in. So. Ouch. Well, at least your hotspot seems to be working better than my audio. Jordan said my audio has been seriously jacked up the past few shows. Sorry, Good. Jordan. I'll see. I'll, I'll troubleshoot some things tonight and see if I can figure that out. Anyway, um, also real quick, shout out to our friends over at More Furniture as well. We're really excited for you guys to see our new studio space. Hopefully you love it as much as we do. And they hooked us up like the entire office, new studio, new furniture, the whole nine yards. And if you guys are in the market for some new furniture, definitely check out their Labor Day sale. You can go to morefurniture.com. That's M-O-R furniture.com. All right, Espo. I, my butt thanks them because I am sitting in a desk chair by them, which is a billion times more comfortable than the chair I was sitting in uh, last time we did this show. So uh, so thank you to them for at least making me slightly comfortable today. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I'm glad you're all settled in and comfortable. Would you rather start with the good news or the eh news first? I'm always a start with the eh news. So. Perfect. We'll start with that. So... Uh, Shams put out an article today saying that the Grizzlies has now entered the chat for Kevin Durant, but, but say that the Grizz are not interested in including Jaron Jackson Jr. or Desmond Bain. So just throwing another team's name into the hat as far as the KD sweepstakes go, does this surprise you at all? No, because who doesn't want Kevin Durant? Who wouldn't kick the tires and go, here's our offer. Are you interested? It sounds like this is another team that lowballed them. Sure, I believe they have five picks for their own, uh, one that they had acquired that they could deal, but they're not willing to give up any of their younger players that would be of interest. So this is another, nah, unless they're, unless they're willing to up that offer, they're not going to get Kevin Durant. But at this point, I'm not sure anybody is because the reporting out there is Kyrie's not going anywhere. So if you're the Nets, why would you try to deal Kevin Durant? Your best chance at uh, at a championship is pairing him and, and KD. The problem is, will KD go go deeper in his threat? I mean, we, we joked that he politely went with the nuclear option last week uh, when he met with Joe Sy, but uh, the owner, but if he doesn't come out and flat out say, I will not report, I'm not going to show up at training camp and I will not play another game in a Nets uniform. Nobody's getting Kevin Durant. It's just not going to happen, uh, especially not a Grizzlies offer that doesn't include a Bain or a Jaron Jackson Jr. And you know that we're going to hear in a day or so the Nets want Ja Morant in any deal for Kevin Durant because that's what every time we hear a team mentioned, there's some asinine, crazy Nets request that uh, that pops up the day after. So I I don't I don't. It's not that I don't believe shams or any of these reports i believe what they're saying is true but i also believe the other part of it where the nets are asking a ridiculous price because i don't think they want or plan on moving kevin durant yeah i mean because everyone keeps bringing up this whole outside of the suns and a little bit within the suns fan base but you know saying that you know a package around mikhail bridges and a bunch of draft picks isn't gonna get it done 
The Nets want an all-star caliber player. They want somebody who can come in and impact them directly right now. But nobody else seems to really be offering that. And if they weren't down with Boston, then who else is going to throw something out there that's even better than that? Because every team that's been interested so far has all the reports have said our best two players or our best player that you would want is off the table. So either they have to lower their expectations or we're going to be in this limbo phase forever. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're they're like the 40 year old virgin who keeps saying, hey, I'm waiting for marriage and there's nothing out there that lives up to my standards. Like at some point, just accept what is going on, accept the the fate and, and, and choose pick somebody because the right deal or the Mr. Perfect ain't out there. Just accept mm-hmm. reality and go with the best one that you can find uh, and accept that. So I love this. Shane just sent this to us, and I missed this, but 30 minutes ago, Mikhail Bridges tweeted out, I'm sitting here watching just like y'all, LOL. Well, Bless Mikhail Bridges' heart. He also had the giant eye emojis, too, earlier today, uh, so people are wondering about that. Look, this is the first time that we've heard – uh, his name officially mentioned. The assumption's always been that Mikhail Bridges right. will have to be in any deal for KD, but Shams, you know, brings him up. Of course, he's sitting there uh, with with interest because he may have to uproot his entire life and move to a different coast. Uh, you know, granted, it's one he's familiar with, having uh, played in Villanova at Villanova, which isn't that far from New York city uh, there in Philly, but look this, I can't imagine what it's like for a player. We sit here and think, Oh man, can they just figure this out already? But imagine if your life is the one that's being, being mentioned, uh, being uprooted in this. I can't imagine what Mikhail Bridges must feel or any of these guys who have been included as, you know, salary fillers, we like to call it. That's their life. That's their livelihood. That's everything about it could change at any moment if the Nets decide finally that the Suns are the most palatable offer. Now, I don't know that they will. It sounds like uh, they've rebuffed everything the Suns have offered, uh, according to Shams, but something's got to give. Something's got to give. Either KD's going to back off or the Nets are going to have to move them. Yeah, absolutely. So you had brought up the fact that this is the first time we've seen a legitimate report that Mikel Bridges was involved in some sort of trade talk here. But the way that Shams worded it was was very specific, I would say, or intentional. He said, quote, similarly, um, have dangled a package around all defensive wing Mikel Bridges and a handful of first round draft picks, which has not picked up any steam with the Nets, league sources said. So it's not like he was like, oh, there was an official offer made that included Mikel Bridges. It was just more of what we've kind of been saying this whole time that obviously Mikel is probably going to be involved if there is a trait that happens with the, the Nets and the Suns. Well, and Shams talks about a three or four team deal that they've brought up that could, uh, you know, net the Nets. Uh, sorry for the bad pun. <laughs> I got somebody's got to do it without Gerald here. Uh, that could net the Nets, that all-star player they're looking for. And it sounds like they rebuffed Uh, With that, too, look, I don't think the Nets, like I said, want to move him. And that's the key here. And what what the Suns need to do is they need to go straight to Devin Booker right now and say, call up call up Kevin Durant, because you know that 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 they've been in touch with this or text him and say, are you willing to tell the Nets that it's Phoenix or it's nowhere? If not, it's time to start looking at being the third team in a Donovan Mitchell and to the Knicks deal where you can get a Jordan Clarkson, where you can get uh, Bogdanovich from the jazz. It's time to start filling those holes because if he's not willing to do that, I don't think the nets are sending him to Phoenix. And I know, I know flex said, I get it, but it, what that's all based on is Katie wants to be in Phoenix. The Suns want him and that Katie has leverage. The only way Katie has leverage is if he point blank says it's Phoenix or it's nothing. And if he's not willing to do that, you have to do what's best for your franchise and prepare yourself for the all out war that's going to come this season. That is the Western conference. It's a total gauntlet. And if you're not prepared, you're going to fall way back in the, in the standings and that whole dream of winning a championship 
is going to slowly uh, decay if you don't fortify things in the backup point guard position and potentially the power forward position. you got to figure all that out. And I don't think uh, we're getting to a point where waiting if he's not willing to, if Katie's not willing to say it's Phoenix or nothing, seems like a fool's errand to me. Yeah, I imagine it that we're kind of still in this situation right now because you would have liked to think that something would have happened by this point. But Jay in the chat said, wouldn't mind seeing Jordan Clarkson throwing an alley oop to Mikel in the purple sunburst jerseys. Who knows? I don't know. I guess we still have a few weeks before training camp and the season tip in, but hopefully sooner than later, we will have some sort of resolution to this. Also, I did want to point out one additional thing from the article, just because we've talked about this a lot as far as why the national media continuously leaves the Phoenix Suns out of the conversation as far as getting Kevin Durant. And we keep asking the question, why? Well, Shams kind of mentioned it a little bit within this article. He said, with DeAndre in signed to four-year maximum contract and unable to be moved until January, Phoenix has attempted over the past month to creative proposals uh, to Brooklyn, to make creative proposals to Brooklyn, possibly via three or four team trades where an all-star caliber player goes to the Nets. But the Suns have yet to find a suitable deal. And that is largely why they appear to be behind Boston, Toronto, and Miami in the Durant sweepstakes. So at least there is a little bit of an explanation, I suppose you could say, as to why a lot of national media has left the Suns out of this conversation so much over the last month. At this point, you know, if it's not Phoenix, just get it done to Boston. I mean, we know that's the inevitable. I think this really is a two-horse race at this point, uh, Phoenix or Boston. Uh, you know, it's nice that they mentioned Miami, but I don't think Miami's going to going to move around enough that's going to be necessary uh, to make that happen. Uh, it, it just doesn't seem to make sense to me. I don't think Toronto is going to give up Scotty Barnes at any point. So at, at, at what at some point. It's one of those two teams. And it, it, like I said, Katie's going to be the one that's going to have to force the hand here. It's not going to happen uh, just because all of a sudden the Nets are going to wake up and go, oh, yeah, that deal is better than we thought it was. Uh, you know, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Casey in the and, chat brings up a good point, too. They said that screenshot is at least confirmation that they're working on something. Yeah. And that and, does make you feel a little bit better. Well, and we knew. I mean, we knew they've been in on this. There's not a, there hasn't been a doubt in my mind but the other thing i'm sick of this oh well you know deandre ayton complicated things they didn't want deandre ayton it was going to be very tough to pull off a four-team deal where you found a team that wanted ayton that was going to sign him that had the pieces that the nets were going to want like i don't think that overly complicated this because i don't think you were ever going to find the right pieces for for Aiton that you could send to the Nets because the it seemed like the really the the one suitor that DeAndre Aiton had was Indiana and Indiana didn't have the kind of guy that they were willing to give up that was going to keep the Nets happy. The Nets want a big name uh, as part of this and you I don't think you were going to get that done just because you had DeAndre Aiton as a trade piece and the Suns are better with DeAndre Aiton right now then they'd be without him so well as always we'll keep you updated on anything else that kind of happens around. oh bless our hearts my goodness we've been through the ringer these past month or so with this whole saga but if you want something to cheer you up i highly recommend downloading the DraftKings sportsbook app it's a lot of fun and it makes watching and being involved in sports even more fun because you can potentially win some money on it so if you have not already go download the DraftKings sportsbook app and when you sign up make sure you use the promo code phnx because when you use that code after you bet five dollars on college football you're going to get two hundred dollars in free bets instantly It is that easy. Just a $5 college football bet gets you $200 free bets on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. One more time, that's code PHNX, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. That starts this weekend. 
I cannot believe college football is here. I'm sure Shane, uh, the mustache behind the Mac, already has a uh, you know 40 or 50 bets for this weekend on college football that he's working on. Uh, it's fun. It's mm-hmm. it's a fun time of year. We got training camp right around the corner as well. So there's all sorts of NBA futures bets you can can place out there too. Uh, I need to get my app working because the location services aren't working. And so they can't confirm I'm in Arizona and uh, that that's happening on all my apps right now. So I can <laughs> figure that out because I got to get in on this uh, football action and take, yeah. uh, take advantage of them free bets for sure. You're going to have to go to whatever cell provider you have and yell at them. Maybe they'll give you a free phone. Yeah. Probably upgrade not. your phone on it. Probably not, but <laughs> maybe you'll get lucky. And don't yell at them. Be nice to them. I was just joking. <laughs> Okay, should we get to the good news now? Yes, we can get to the good news. The good news is the Phoenix Suns put out a teaser video with the caption 8-23-22. And within that video, there were a few former Suns talking about how, quote, they're back. Obviously, this is pointing to the Sunburst jerseys that we all know and love coming back this season. And I'm hoping that by tomorrow, since they put tomorrow's date on the caption, we'll actually have an official announcement maybe be able to pick up some jerseys or at least pre-order the jerseys. Yeah, it'll be Um, pre-ordered. They'll show up sometime in 2023. Let's uh, (laughs) let's be honest. I hope not. That would be so bad. (laughs) Honestly, that would be the worst thing ever because like you should know that everyone's going to want all of these jerseys. So you should, you had enough time to prepare. You do remember the Valley jerseys, right? Yes, but that's different (laughs) because that one you could say, well, we didn't know how it would hit or not. You know, these ones are going to be an instant hit and everyone wants to get their hands on it. And it's been multiple years in the making for this Jersey to come back this season. So first, first off, does this qualify as a T this was an announcement uh, video without showing the exact jersey. Like everybody knew exactly what they were talking about. Al McCoy is actually wearing the t-shirt version of the jersey. It's the worst kept secret ever. We've talked about this since last year that the or since last season that the purple jerseys were coming back the sunburst or as some called it when they initially came out the Lisa Simpson jersey. Uh, just think about it. It does look like her head uh, there. I, I'm excited because this is, to me, the best jersey, uh, one of the best jerseys in NBA history. Let's not let's not mince words. And the best jersey in Suns history. Now, people say, oh, the black sun, but black is not an official Suns color. This deep purple is the best color this team has ever worn. I cannot wait to see these back on the court. And it would only be appropriate that in the 30th anniversary of the 92-93 team, which is part of why they're bringing back these classic jerseys, which it was the first year that they wore them, that this team finally got over the hump and won a championship in those jerseys. Because you know they'll wear them big time in the playoffs as well. Uh, I can't wait, and I cannot wait to see who will likely be the greatest son of all time, Devin Booker, when it's all said and done, get a chance to wear the greatest jersey in franchise history. Who are you getting? Are you going to get a book? I'm guessing you're going to get one that has Devin's name on it. Anybody else? Uh, No, I'm not getting a booker. I'm going to get a Jock Landell uh, jersey because that's right. somebody, Somebody said to me, maybe you shouldn't. It's not a guaranteed contract. But after what he did, uh, on our show, I think I have to. I, I think he's the new Frank Kaminsky. I'm sorry, he Frank. He is. What uh-huh. do you mean you think? He 100% is. Okay. I'm sorry, Frank, but I've moved on. I have <laughs> eyes for someone else. Uh, and, uh, you know, Landell's Landing is uh, is ready for some parties uh, this oh year. Oh, my so. God. Well, I have a, a replacement for the Cove, too. Yep. Yeah, the, the Cove is boarded up and, and gone. It's Landell's Landing. Uh, let's get Let's get ready. Ready. That's fantastic. What, what are you guys in the chat? Who are you guys all going to get? And I know that you said like the purple is the more iconic one, but wouldn't it be cool if they just brought back purple and black? I'm just I saying. I think they should just bring back the whole the whole set. Like, yeah, I mean, why I, not? Originally, I'd been told, oh, Mitchell and Ness won't let them. They own the uh, they own the uh, you know the rights to it now. I found out that was BS. So. I think if these are popular and they sell like we expect, maybe that's why they shelved the new jerseys that they were supposed to wear this year. And maybe, just maybe, 
we'll get what we've asked for for a very long time and just go back to that set. I mean, maybe it's a slight alteration on it, but give me that great jersey. They never should have went away from it. They go to the seven seconds or less era that was the most boring jersey in NBA history, and they've been chasing, trying to find something as special since then. The Valley was close, but at this point, you know, if you were going to go to that as your complete set, you would have done it uh, in a rebrand this year, likely. So give me some version of, of this with an alternate Valley, and we've got the best lineup of, of uniforms uh, that you could have. And if, if you're still in that championship window, which we expect for the next four or five years, you're going to sell a hell of a lot of jerseys because we see those jerseys out all the time in, in public, no matter where you are. Uh, in the country uh, and, and across the globe, even people still rock that. So, yeah, I mean, would why do you think they want to kind of reimagine this design instead of bring it back exactly as is? Do, do you, you think it's to? just from a money standpoint? Because what do you think it is? Do, do you want the honest answer? Yes. This is another. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say out loud, but I'm going to anyways. Robert Sarver has always had an issue with the past because he isn't as beloved as uh, a previous owner. So to me, uh, hearkening back to that, going to that as your full-time uniform is saying that era was better than what I have. And I don't think that's a, that's a road that they're willing to cross for a year to make some money off of throwback jerseys uh, for a 30th anniversary. Yeah. But overall, I don't, I think that's why we'll see some, variation of it we won't see the exact jerseys uh, that they were i mean how petty though it's not but, like the previous owner is the one who designed that jersey let's and let's it's still be, part of the history of your franchise and your team regardless if you were there or not this is a franchise that tried to do away with history for a five-year period uh, about a decade back where there wasn't any purple purple was not at all on the court on the home jersey uh it was it was the road but they they tried to shy away from it like i get it and i understand petty but have we all not learned that life is just high school repeating over and over again and petty and petty is the currency for many people in it uh, nothing true. shocks me so this is true. I mean, that's super unfortunate, though, because I do. I feel like it would be fun if you brought back every single one of those jerseys, especially in a year like this. Like you said, the, what? how many? 30 years? 30-year 30 30, anniversary? 30-year 30 anniversary of the 92-93 season. So. Like, that would be super fun. And all those guys would probably love rocking those jerseys. So, I don't know. But at least we're getting one, and that's all that matters. At least they're getting something. we got to count yes. our blessings, guys. And I, and I think the, the warm-ups will... Uh, will look like them. I, I think we'll see different things uh, honoring the 92-93 team. I think this teaser video is the first of many, although I did find it interesting that there was one glaring omission mm -hmm. uh, in terms of people in that video. We'll see if uh, one Charles Barkley shows up in the actual unveil tomorrow, uh, but that's the guy, right? I mean, that's the when you think of those jerseys, you think of Charles Barkley. And if you don't see Charles Barkley in the video, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. So uh, hopefully he's involved in whatever they're, they're doing this year. Uh, I hope that's not a bridge that's been burned, but uh, I, Chuck needs to be involved is all I'll say. So Yeah. If he's not, there's going to be a lot of tea floating around somewhere <laughs> about why not. Yeah. So yeah, buckle up, people. Maybe, can get maybe we'll spill it if we find it. I don't know, but uh, I just I hope Chuck's involved. So yeah, we do have a super chat from Andrew. Andrew, thank you so much. They said, "Hey guys, God bless. Can't wait for Suns games again. We are right there with you, Andrew. We're just around the corner, thankfully, um, and hopefully, rocking a, some a super dope new jersey, new in print in quotes. <laughs> hey, it's new to you if you haven't seen it new in person old. before. Yeah, Look, they, they did old. they did do the black throwbacks when they were with Adidas in 2012, I believe, uh, when I was there with the team. And, and those were nice to see. But I am the purple is where it's at. I, I cannot wait to see those on the court. They look so great on TV. They're they're fun 
uh, to see in the crowd. It will be the Purple Palace yet again out there in downtown Phoenix. Actually, not too far from where we're sitting in these new studios. I can't wait to see it, and I can't wait for, uh, I believe it's actually my birthday, November 30th, is when the Suns and Bulls Ooh. play here in Phoenix. And I, I'm going to bet we're going to see some stuff uh, since that was the matchup in the 92-93 yeah. finals. So uh, I might be taking that night off. So I, I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so what you're saying is you're not going to be on the show that night because you're going to be at the arena. I'll be drunk at the arena is what I'm trying to say, re reminding the nine-year-old me of why we fell in love with basketball and we now talk about it five days a week. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Well, um, that's okay, but we want you to have nice things too. And you're a fan first, so you should be able to enjoy some of those things. Okay, you ready for some screenshots? Or uh, Sure. At this rate, one screenshot. I have screenshot. one screenshot for you today presented yep. by Arizona Department of Health Services. COVID-19 vaccines are free for everyone five and older. Those 12 and older are also now eligible for a booster. Visit azhealth.gov slash find vaccine for a location near you. Okay. So I saw this neat little update on Dario Saric from a fan. This was tweeted by Zen NBA. And it's a screenshot from Reddit user ZZ999. And they said, exclusively from your Croatian correspondent, maybe of interest to you. I watched only the second half. And my first thought when I saw him was that he's slim and in good shape, has the same quickness as pre-injury. Mind you, of course, he was not playing against NBA level competition, but still, this was his fourth game and it was the best outing for him. He was four of seven from three, very encouraging. Overall, good energy and hustle as we know him. He started the game and finished with 18, 6, and 1 in 25 minutes, two steals, some sloppy plays, which led to four turnovers. Overall, 7 of 12 from the field, no free throws, but very encouraging. This is good news because I know last week we were talking, I think it was when Gerald and I were on the show last Monday, we had somebody ask us if we thought it was a good or a bad idea that Dario is playing um, overseas right now for his country. And we both kind of were like, it's probably a good thing more so than a bad thing, because you've got to start getting him back into game shape. And the only way to do that is to play games like legitimate games. Granted, of course, as this person also noted, not necessarily against NBA caliber players, but some NBA players are involved in those games, but one way or the other, he's starting to get back into game shape, apparently looking really good. And that's great news. I've I've been uh, trying to find where to watch. These were preliminary games. Eurobasket starts this week. We'll be able to find those games and watch Dario more. It's next to impossible to find uh, streams of these uh, and, and stuff. So I have not seen Dario play with my own eyes, but I'll trust uh, uh, Reddit user, uh, whatever, whatever. ZZ999. Okay, there we go. <laughs> ZZ999. Uh, I'll, I'll trust our Croatian correspondent to the program hear that he looks good look dario's game's never been uh never been predicated on athleticism so so i'm not too afraid that the the two injuries are going to take much from his game because he never played above the rim he wasn't a guy that that needed that he's always been smart he plays smart and as long as he gets his legs under him, which Eurobasket should help him do and gets in the flow of games, his passing, his shooting uh, will still be there and he'll be able to, to do that at a high level. Dario, I think, is going to be a key piece this year. It's what they were missing in the Dallas series where when Dallas went smaller, you had no counter. You went with Bismack or uh, you, know, the, you, you tried – different things but you did not really have an answer this gives you a whole nother dynamic and another ball handler on the court he played a lot of point center uh in this the finals year a few you know a couple of years ago and i think his loss uh, when he got injured in that i believe his first game of the finals was a huge loss in that series he could be a difference maker uh, and as we've talked about on the program before, he'll help campaign and campaign needs as much help as he can get after last year. Uh, I really hope if whatever deal comes up, 
even though Dario's only a one, uh, he's on an expiring. I hope he's not included because he can offer a lot to this team. And I'm excited to see what he does with Croatia and Eurobasket uh, when I can actually watch it. So I feel a little bit better about where he is health wise. Yeah, I agree on all of those points that you just mentioned. And this just makes me feel good. Like, we haven't had a whole lot of feel good news kind of come out in the last few months. So, I'm clinging to this as much as I can because it does, it is feel good news. It's good to see that Dario is able to play basketball again, not just from a selfish standpoint of how it can help the Suns and or campaign, but also for him as a person, like this is what he loves to do. And he hasn't been able to do it for so long. And I'm sure that's had, you know, a little bit of heaviness on his heart and his mind and just life in general. So he's probably feeling really great. I know Gerald talked to him at Summer League when we were out in Las Vegas and he seemed like he was in really good spirits and really excited to finally be playing basketball again. Also, if you guys haven't checked out that exclusive interview, it's at gophnx.com if you are interested in um, listening to that. But it, this is just really good news for this time of the year. So I'll take it. <laughs> I love rooting for Dario because he doesn't look like he should be an NBA player. Uh, you know, when you when you see him at first glance, and those are the kind of guys that I pull for. You know, like it, you don't look like you should be there, which is what many people think when they see me standing next to my wife. Is how did that guy get there? He must be rich. I'm not. I'm just lucky. But uh, but that's how I, I love rooting for a guy like Dario in that. Uh, in that way, because he comes out and he does things that uh, surprise and and is such a key factor for that bench. Uh, I think he'll be spectacular uh, coming back and, and just getting that energy back with that group, providing that extra extra level. And I hope we see that uh, in these games for Croatia. I hope we see glimpses of that so we can go, all right, I, I understand that piece of the bench because the bench is the one area we're worried most about going into this year. Uh, no matter what happens uh, on the KD front, the bench is the, is the thing that's, uh, that's most scary to me that, that obviously was a huge reason why they went home mm -hmm. last year in the playoffs. So Dario can be a key piece in that. So uh, it is, it's good news uh, when we don't get a lot of news in general right now. So yeah, it <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I agree completely. And then um, especially with the thought that maybe we'll see Cam Johnson move into the starting lineup that could mess around with our already questionable bench over there. Uh, Andrew said, who do you guys think our X factor from the bench will be this year? And also asked, could we get more signings before the season? Honestly, I feel like Dario could be the X factor from the bench this year. Um yeah, I campaign think it's him still campaign. has maybe a claim to that. Yeah, yeah, I, and I think they're they're kind of tied together, like we talked about. I think those two guys are key in terms of signings. I don't think you'll see any actual signing. I think you'll see a trade if you if you see anything. Uh, if you make a big move and it's more players going out than coming in, obviously you'll have to make some signings. A guy that I'd keep an eye on because he hasn't signed anywhere yet. Uh, is uh, is Carmelo Anthony, depending on if uh, if they make a move for KD and lose a lot of their bench, I could see a, a guy like Carmelo coming on the veteran minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I've heard anything specific, but uh, I think that that could be potential. Uh, you know, if somebody gets bought out uh, that we don't expect, uh, you know, some people talking about Kemba Walker in the in, in the chat. You know, somebody that winds up uh, without a job somewhere else. Uh, but is an intriguing name either at the power forward or, or point guard spot. Maybe you see something there uh, as well. But yeah, for the bench X factors, I think it's Dario. I think it's uh, campaign and not just because he's my new Frank Kaminsky, but I think a sleeper pick could be a uh, jock. Uh, it, if his shooting from deep plays out the way that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that people think he can uh, coming off his rookie year. I'm hopeful for him. That would be so fun just because he, like you said, he's your new Frank or whatever, which basically means he's a very likable person, somebody that is yeah. so easy to root for. So you want him to find success, especially with your team, because that just makes it even more sweeter. You know what I mean? It just makes yeah. it a little more fun to cheer for those type of guys. Also, going back a few minutes when you, when you brought up your wife, 
She's in our chat right now. She said we both left out, babe, and blew yeah. you a kiss. But I want to go back to the original comment yeah. that she said. Yeah. We're talking about being sons on your birthday. She said, I'll see you there, babe. Hashtag go bulls. Sorry. I'm well, the, the second <laughs> comment was nice. Thanks, sweetheart. <laughs> Hi, yeah, she's a, she's a Bulls fan, and uh, when I'm in trouble, she wears her, I've told this before, but her 93 Eastern Conference Championship shirt to bed, uh, and yeah, so, That's uh, so yeah, <laughs> and she's a good liar, but she said we both lucked out, which is not true. I oh. lucked out. So. <laughs> All right, Espo, so we have to tell the people about our sweepstakes. We're still in the running oh, for yeah. the KD sweepstakes, but we don't know what the outcome of that will be, yeah. but we do know with no um, of our sweepstakes will be, and that's some really lucky winners. So we've yeah, partnered and you're with not, OGs. Go ahead. Listen, listen, you're not getting drunk or high off the KD sweepstakes. You can with ours, though. That's right. So first up, we've partnered with OGs uh, for our Flavoring Life sweepstakes, and one winner is going to receive three, yes, three bags of OGs, including their orange creamsicle and tropical flavors, an OG's hat, a PHNX shirt of your choice, and a PHNX annual membership. You can sign up for this sweepstakes at gophnx.com or click the link in our show notes. And as a reminder, you can enter multiple times. So if you have not done so, at least do it one time. But if you haven't done it today and you did it last week, do it again today because why not? Look, let's be honest. You're sitting at work. You're slacking off by watching us or listening to us. Just go <laughs> enter like once an hour to give you something to do. Exactly. Especially if you're working out, working at home. We know you're putting in like three and a half hours of work. Let's be honest. Uh, but you, you got to kind of be near the desk so your teams doesn't show that you're away. Just, <laughs> you know, if you're if you're done watching Netflix or even if you're watching it, uh, you know, Netflix and fill. Fill out the form. So <laughs> That's hilarious. Netflix, Netflix and fill. Love that. Also, check out OGs online at Nine Brands, or you can find them on Instagram at OGs Brands. You can also find their products at your local dispensary, but you must be 21 years or older to purchase. And of course, we have another sweepstakes because we can't just have one. We got to have at least two. Um, our partners over at Four Peaks also hooked us up for the Toast of the Month sweepstakes. This one is a chance for you to win a $50 Four Peaks gift card a PHNX shirt of your choice, and a PHNX annual membership. Again, just go to gophnx.com or click the link in our show notes for more details. And a quick reminder that our last Wednesday is just around the corner. Every last Wednesday of the month, we all go out to Four Peaks. We have all of our live shows at their brewery in Tempe on 8th Street. It's good food, good fun, good beer, and you guys are welcome. This is your formal invitation. Come hang out with us. August 31st at Four Peaks. It's going to be a great time. And like I said, the whole, well, at least like I said before, the whole family can come on down to the brewery. You do have to be 21 or older to drink the beer, and we ask that you enjoy responsibly, but it is a family-friendly environment. So bring the whole crew. Yeah, I mean, come on out, have some fun, watch us. Like I said, if you're slacking off at work, uh, say you have a meeting and drive over. If you're working from home, just put Teams on your phone uh, and, and just make sure you're in there every once in a while and come have a beer, hang out, uh, get some chicken tendies. I've told they're, they're spectacular. I've also been told don't call them chicken tendies because I'm <laughs> almost 40 and that's what the kids say. But come on out. It'll be a good time. Uh, Gain said dogs, question mark. I do believe their patio is dog friendly, but I don't think inside is dog friendly. Yeah, just bring one out. We'll figure it out when you get there. So <laughs> bring the dog too. Yes, but dog, they're, they kids, are dog friendly family. in some capacity at least. That I know. No, also, Not cat friendly though, I've been told. Not cat friendly. Just rude. So rude. <laughs> also, last thing. Shane just texted us that the Kevin Durant next team odds are back up on DraftKings right bah, 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 bah. now. So if you have not gotten your bets in for that and you want to, hurry, run, go do what, that. What are the Brooklyn Suns Nets, The Suns are a plus 300. Right. Um, so it's Brooklyn Nets minus 170, Boston Celtics plus 225, Suns plus 300, Raptors plus 600, and so on and so forth. What, what's the Grizzlies at? I, plus 2,000. Uh, you know what? I, I I don't think it will happen, but I'd put some money on them in New Orleans as long shots if you're looking to uh, make a little cash potentially. You know, one of those $10 to make 200 or something mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't be a bad idea here. 
New Orleans is plus two fifty or twenty five hundred. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah. So, so those are two that you're going to get pretty good, uh, pretty damn good odds on if you go after there. And uh, look, New Orleans is a team that has has the talent. They just have to decide. Okay, we're willing to give up a Brandon Ingram in a deal, and I think that's when the Nets would be like, oh, well, that's interesting. So. Hmm. How interesting. All right, Espo, that's all I got for you today. Oh, wow. I, I, I know. Tight 40 minutes, a drier shrunken edition. I'm just glad that there's not more uh, random rumors that we have to sort through or uh, guys impersonating yet. Jay Crowder again. <laughs> uh, just some good old basketball rumors and jersey talk we'll talk more about the jersey tomorrow after they uh after they unveil it and and maybe i'll try to find somebody that uh can come on and talk with us uh, about yeah. those uniforms as well. you should definitely do that start putting out all your feelers we know you're the most you're the did one as far as jerseys go so bring we'll us in somebody do. who's got all the insight <laughs> and all the information for us that would be fun thank you all for joining us today we appreciate you as always until we see you tomorrow, you can follow me on Twitter at Lindsay Smith AZ, and you can follow Espo at Espo. Espo, take us home. Don't go chasing waterfalls or Kevin Durant. You might be uh, not happy with where you wind up. Ahoy, ahoy, everybody. Ahoy, ahoy, everybody.